So over a year ago, I released a video on the hex computer hardware that I've developed. And if you haven't seen it already, if you want to check that out, there will be a link in the description. And um, shortly after I released the video, I decided to start a new Redstone computer project using that hardware. So here's an old screenshot of that computer right here. As you can see, this computer has almost everything I've covered in the video. I was pretty happy with my design until I encountered a few roadblocks. The first problem was that I hadn't yet developed any suitable hexadecimal ROM designs to use on my computer, and at the time I couldn't figure out how. The second problem came when I started testing the computer and found some bugs in the memory. I will spare the details since I have limited time here and I want to keep this video short. All you need to know is my computer had some bugs and I had no idea how to fix them. After several attempts of trying to fix the computer and get it to work uh, without any success, I decided to redo the design and as I'm currently recording, I am redesigning the chips and other hardware for my hex computer project, which is what I will be sharing in this first progress report. Alright, so we are now in my redstone lab and I will start by showing off the new CPU chip that I have developed. This is the second generation of my lineup of H1 hex CPUs. And of course, the first thing you will notice about this, the first thing you will notice about this is that it is larger than the first gen, which is over there, because it contains a lot more features. Uh, most important are the amount of conditions. Now, if we go over here, we can see um, we can see five output ports and these are the flags. So the first three flags in red, yellow, and green are responsible for detecting if the A and B registers are greater than, less than, or equal to each other. The other flags in blue check if the C register is zero and if C isn't zero. Over here you will see some additional ports that don't exist on the H1 Gen 1 CPU. Now these input ports are in blue and red and what these are supposed to do is they're supposed to control, so let's see if we go in here, they're supposed to control all three of these um, individual instruction buffers. And these instruction buffers are not only connected to the rest of the system, but they are also connected to um, their own little instruction decoder. So the reason I have it set up like this, instead of just having one instruction decoder and having three instead, is because I wanted to have, uh, well, the way uh, the CPU executes code is I wanted it to be staged. So um, <clears throat> we have our separate uh, instruction decoder input ports right here and they're supposed to, all of them are supposed to be on at the same time and they will have like um, a different function in their areas selected so this is the ALU decoder, this is the output register decoder, this is the input registers decoder. And what these will do is, or what these buffers will do, is they will go in sequence. So this first buffer, when the um, CPU starts executing a new line of code, <coughs> this buffer will turn off that it will deactivate and whatever has been selected in this decoder will uh, go over to the registers and um, 
it will either save whatever value has been inputted into this into the registers and after that um, the second buffer will deactivate and it will select an ALU function and um, afterwards uh, the third will deactivate as well and it will um, enable the output register if you have selected that. Okay, so before I end this video off, I want to show you guys just a couple more things that I have um, created. A couple more um, chips that I've developed for my new uh, Redstone Hex computer. So I'm going to do it briefly uh, just because we have, I, I'm running out of time. So um, right here we have uh, the new RAM chip and it's basically works the same way as the old RAM chip did though with a few minor tweaks um, first off uh, there's a naked copy right over here so first off um, instead of there just being like uh, four inputs for both the read and write functions there are eight because each input handles uh, one nibble of data instead of one byte of data. Also, the other thing, the other change I made is the new RAM chip um, does not have a clear function, does not have a um, wipe function for the entire, um, all four cells of memory or all the different cells of memory because um, it's just not really necessary. And lastly, we have the um, block chip is basically what it's supposed to be. It's um, basically what this chip contains is the clock, um, which will keep all the different computer uh, components uh, in sync when I assemble everything together eventually and when I finish uh, designing everything as well as the motherboard which I will definitely have to redesign since there is going to be a whole lot more that I will have to um, take into consideration. Oh and you probably may have noticed if you haven't already I'll just mention it so aside from the clock circuit um, being contained within this chip there's also a few more circuits uh, connected to it and I probably will I will not explain um, what any of these are or what they do I will probably uh, explain that or go into more depth on how this works in another video so yeah anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it was a short one I've been pretty busy as of late uh, with a lot of stuff but on my spare time I would spend uh, working on uh, what I just showed you basically as well as a lot of other projects that I've um, been doing but I am very eager to share all those things with you guys eventually and I do have a lot planned for the future to be honest a lot of personal projects that I've been thinking of and working on so stay tuned and if you enjoyed this video, um, please be sure to subscribe and like or comment or whatever, and I'll see you guys in the next video.